This is Lesson 562 in The Black Death. How did the plague reshape European society? The place is Europe, and the time is between 1347 and 1351. Key people of the Black Death, the flagellants. We're going to learn about them. And key concepts of the Black Death, the Great Famine, and the Little Ice Age. Imagine that in the time it takes to complete high school, Half of all the people you know die of disease. It makes COVID-19 look lame by comparison. The Black Death, 1347 to 1351. The term Black Death did not arrive until sometime after the event. At the time, it was most commonly called the Great Mortality. Black Death seems to just pop a little more than that. The culprits were bacteria, fleas, and rats. So first you had the famine of 1315 to 1322. By 1300, Europeans were farming almost all the land that they could cultivate. And a population crisis developed. Climate changes in Europe brought seven years of crop failures between 1315 and 1322 because of excessive rain. And as many as 15% of the peasants in some English villages died. And one of the consequences of starvation and poverty was the susceptibility to disease. The path of the plague. You can see it here. It began in Messina, right there in 1347, and then spread northward. At least Messina was the point in which it really entered Western Europe. So in 1347, the plague reached Constantinople first. Symptoms. Buboes would appear. And then septicemia formed. And that, that had almost a 100% mortality rate. The Black Death came in three different plagues. You had the bubonic plague. You also had the pneumonic plague. And then you had the septicemic plague. And don't get the wrong idea. People back then in the Middle Ages, they knew how to fight disease. They knew how to isolate people, much the same way that we practice social distancing and quarantining now. And they knew how to identify symptoms. But when you've got three different plagues with three different types of symptoms all hitting you at once, it starts to look like people are dying for no reason at all. And that's the problem that they ran into with the Black Death. Let's begin with the bubonic plague. The bubonic plague was the most commonly seen form of the Black Death, and the mortality rate was between 30 and 75 percent. And the symptoms were enlarged and inflamed lymph nodes, especially around the armpits, neck, and groin. Victims were subject to headaches, nausea, aching joints, fever of 101 to 105 degrees, vomiting, and a general feeling of illness. Symptoms took from one to seven days to appear. Then you have the pneumonic plague. The pneumonic plague was the second most commonly seen form of the Black Death. The mortality rate for the pneumonic plague was 90 to 95 percent. And if treated today, the mortality rate would be 5 to 10 percent. The pneumonic plague infected the lungs, and symptoms included slimy sputum tinted with blood. Sputum is saliva mixed with mucus exerted from the respiratory system. The disease would destroy your lungs, and then you died of asphyxiation. And as the disease progressed, the sputum became free-flowing and bright red. Symptoms, again, took one to seven days to appear. In other words, you could tell somebody had it just by looking at them. But then you've got the septicemic plague. The septicemic plague was the most rare form of all, but the mortality rate was close to 100%, and even today there is no treatment. Symptoms were a high fever and skin turning deep shades of purple. The Black Death got its name from the deep purple, almost black discoloration. Victims usually died the same day that symptoms appeared, and in some cities, as many as 800 people died every day. The effects of the Black Death on Europe. One third of the population of Europe died at a minimum. This one third statistic has been used so much and for so long that nobody remembers where it came from. More recent studies showed that the death rate may have been much higher. 
In all, at least 25 million people died from the plague. Entire communities completely disappeared by the thousands. The effect on children. Children suffered as well. A common nursery rhyme that you've all heard is ring around the rosy. Pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Ring around the rosy. Rosary beads were meant to give you God's help. And a pocket full of posies? Posies were used to stop the odor of rotting bodies, which was at one point thought to cause the plague. It was also used widely by doctors to protect them from the infected plague patients. And ashes, ashes? The church burned the dead when burying them became too laborious. And we all fall down? That means we're all dead. The disease cycle. It started like this. The flea drinks rat blood that carries the bacteria. The bacteria multiply in the flea's gut. The flea's gut gets clogged with the bacteria. The flea bites humans and regurgitates blood into the human wound, and the human is infected. This is an image from the Toggenberg Bible from 1411. This shows a doctor lancing a bubo. Medieval art and the plague. Medieval art during the plague, not surprisingly, had an obsession with death. Giovanni Boccaccio, in his book, The The Decameron, wrote this, Victims ate lunch with their friends and dinner with their ancestors. In other words, he was implying that you could get the disease and die just that fast. The Danse Macabre. The Danse Macabre was an artistic genre that commented on the universality of death. No matter what your station in life is, whether you're a noble or a king or a knight or a peasant or a serf, You are vulnerable to death. Here's another image of Europe during the Black Death. Attempts to stop the plague. And we've got two things here. We've got a doctor's robe, and we're going to talk about that. And then we also have the process of leeching, bloodletting. Bloodletting was thought to rid the blood of poisons and bring the fluids into balance. The Plague Doctor. The iconic Plague Doctor did not actually appear until later in the Plague's history, but they are fun to talk about. The Plague Doctor's greatest contribution was not actually in healing people, but in collecting vital statistics and information about the Plague. The Plague Doctors weren't actual doctors, but they were actually paid more than real doctors, and their job was actually quite dangerous, and many died. The flagellanti. They performed self-inflicted penance for our sins. We know them better as the flagellants. They would wear uniforms, and they would assemble in the square of a town and whip themselves bloody with spiked whips. And their aim was to rid an area of sin. And they were often highly disruptive and unruly. The church did not like them at all. Many of the flagellants claimed to have spiritual healing and spiritual authority, and they often attacked people who they thought were not living a devout life, and often their victims were the local priests. Pogroms against the Jews. And you've got some pictures of Jews here. Uh, You've got your typical Jewish hat and a golden circle, the obligatory badge that Jews often had to wear in the community. Pogroms were kind of like first strikes against the Jews. Jews were accused of using diabolical means to spread the plague to Christians. The church eventually condemned attacks on Jews as, quote, illogical. Lots of Jews were also being killed by the Black Death at the time. Death triumphant, a major artistic theme. A little macabre ditty goes like this. A sickly season, the merchant said. The town I left was filled with dead. And everywhere these queer red flies crawled upon the corpse's eyes, eating them away. Fair make you sick, the merchant said. They crawled upon the wine and bread. Pale priests with oil and books, bulging eyes and crazy looks, dropping like the flies. 
I had to laugh, the merchant said. The doctors purged and dosed and bled and proved through solemn disputation the cause lay in some constellation. Then they began to die. First they sneezed, the merchant said, and then they turned the brightest red, begged for water, then fell back. With bulging eyes and face turned black, they waited for the flies. I came away, the merchant said. You can't do business with the dead, so I've come here to ply my trade. You'll find this to be a fine brocade. And then he sneezed. The mortality rate, anywhere from 35% to 70% and 25 million dead. What were the political, economic, and social effects of the Black Death? A labor shortage. Serfdom almost completely ended in Western Europe because of the Black Death. Serfs could command higher wages for their labor now, and they could also buy their way out of serfdom. Although serfdom, ironically, became the preferred method to secure scarce labor in Eastern Europe. Serfdom actually became much stronger in Eastern Europe for many of the same reasons that it became weaker in Western Europe. A land surplus. Many of those who owned a lot of land died from the Black Death. So the price of land plummeted, and many more people could now buy land. The effect in agriculture. Noble lords who depended on their land to sell food, they got financially squeezed. Peasants were demanding higher wages, and at the same time, the demand for food was collapsing. And many of these landed nobility went bankrupt. Manufacturing and trade. People who made regular everyday items that everybody used, they suffered economically. There were fewer people to buy those things. And manufacturers had to pay their workers more now because labor was scarce. They had to price their products higher than most people could afford if they wanted to make a profit. Those who made luxury items that were harder to afford, they prospered. Survivors with new wealth wanted to treat themselves before the next plague might come and take them out. So the market for everyday items went from being large to being much less large. And the market for luxury items went from being small to being much less small. The poor, because of the Black Death and the labor shortage that it caused, became a lot less poor. And the rich, who depended on land for their income, became a lot less rich. People in power sought ways to reverse the clock on all of this. They tried to reinstate serfdom in many places. They instituted labor laws which froze wages to back down to pre-plague levels. And this led to numerous violent peasant revolts throughout Europe. Amazingly, social institutions like church and government did not break down like they always seem to in the apocalyptic movies. However, the church and the nobility, the two powerhouses of the Middle Ages, lost prestige and power as a result of the plague. If an invader hit, the Lord could protect you. But if the plague hit, these institutions could do nothing. As a result, the kings of Europe began to compete with their nobles and with the church for power. This was the beginning of the end of feudalism. Kings created more bureaucracy to rule, they raised taxes, they passed laws, and the plague led to an overwhelming pessimism, to religious fanaticism, to suspicion of travelers, and to intolerance of Jews.